By the way, this webinar is also live on YouTube in our GenTFL channel. Okay, may I suggest also to please mute your microphones. Oh, you can turn them on during the question and answer form. Okay, thank you very much for your participation. So most of us, or most of our participants are from the Philippines. Uh, DepEd, Principal, Okay, thank you very much for your participation. Okay, so to start, uh, may we ask Ms. Tiffany to please introduce us our guest speaker for this webinar. Hi, everyone. Good afternoon. Let me introduce to you our speaker. Uh, our speaker is a university lecturer with academic specialty in Thailand for more than seven years. He has presented his papers in different international conferences in different countries. In 2017, he, was, he has won Best in Oral Research Presentation during the International Research Congress organized by APPSAM. His previous research works are published in different reputable journals like Asian EFL, TESO Asia, GenTEFO, and many more, all of which are indexed in Scopus. He received numerous awards in college, namely Outstanding Graduate of the Year, Outstanding Student Leader of the Year, Outstanding Project Chairman of the Year, Outstanding President of the Year, and finalist in the Search for Outstanding Cebuano Youth Leader in 1998. He is the former Marketing and Information Officer Director Synergy of English Education and Development Manager and Executive Committee Chair of a big university in Cebu City. He accepts consultancy assignments from time to time from different companies. At present, he is the Research Director and Associate Dean for General Education Research and accepts assignments in relation to quality assurance at Talisay City College. Dr. Montejo also is a member of GenTEFO Board of Advisors. He is also a member of the APCOR, or Asia Pacific Consortium of Researchers and Educators. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, our speaker, Dr. Helmer Montejo. All right, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for that generous introduction. And I would also like to thank the organizing committee of this webinar series for inviting me to speak on essential matters. So this afternoon, I will be talking about most essential learning competencies, critical success factors in the delivery of education. So right now I am sharing my screen. So I hope that you are seeing what is in my screen. So what is actually MELC or most essential learning competencies? MELC is the primary reference of any academic institution in determining the type of learning delivery and its implementation, which best suits to the local context and diversity of learners. So this is what schools and other academic institutions are relying into. This uh, MELC are the most essential learning competencies. Before I will dig in deeper, let me first share with you a quote from John Dickey. He said, to create the power of competence without creating a corresponding direction to guide the use of that power is bad education. 
So we all know that today's pandemic or today's situation is actually testing the competence of our teachers and also the administrators. So we need to plan out something that will actually empower the power of competence that we are aiming for our teachers. Because after all, we are the center of this uh, Okay, can you hear me? Okay, teachers are becoming the center of attention because it is actually teachers who are identifying the most essential learning competencies to be introduced to students. So this afternoon, my talk will be guided by the following questions. Number one is, why is MELC important? So why are we using the most essential learning competencies in introducing lessons to our students or to our learners? And is MELC timely and relevant? So that's the question. Another is, why do we need to write modules? What is the purpose of a module? What makes it important? And what are the steps in doing it? The third guide question is on the role of teachers. What is the role of teachers in ensuring quality modules? And the fourth question is, what could be the best way in delivering modules to learners? Are we going to do it online or is there another way of doing it and why? And the fifth question is more on the view of parents. How does a parent look at education during the pandemic? So there could be some challenges. Uh, parents will have to weigh and gauge on what to do because everything is new to us. It's new to teachers, it's new to parents, and it's new to the learners. And we also need to note of some things so that we can have a smooth sailing of our discussion. We, learn, we need to learn that essential learning competencies are not just for school, but also for life. If learners know them, Teachers as well as parents will see that the learner will use these essential competencies in many different situations. Meaning to say the MELC that we are trying to find out, the MELC that we're trying to pick from amongst the many is not just for the school, but it is the life after school because the, ML, uh, the MELC is not only useful within the school, but also when you go outside the school. Maybe you can use this when you go to church, when you go to market, when you go to different places around the world or in your own locality. Another thing that we need to note is also when planning the teaching program, the resources to use the choice of language and topic, and the role that teachers get learners to take in their own learning, essential learning competencies will come into play because they are the core of all the teaching that goes on. So it's not just the MELC. There is planning involved. We need to choose the right language. We need to choose the right topic and we need to choose the role that teachers get learners to take in their own learning. And the last thing that we are going to note is actually this. When it comes to learning competencies, we have to consider the most essential. Remember the teachers will teach and coach in the new normal 
and the inclusion of non-essential competencies will sacrifice the quality of work. Now, maybe you will tell me that you are using lesson plans before. Maybe you will tell me that you are using syllabus or syllabi before. That is useful, but not actually as significant as now, because right now, now that we are in a pandemic, now that we are in a most challenging situation, we only need to choose the most essential because the most essential will actually guide us in the delivery of quality education. Remember, our contact with students become limited because there is no face-to-face. -face. And if we are going to include everything, what is in the lesson plan or what is in the syllabus, the thing is we cannot finish the whole thing within a semester or within a school year or academic year. That's why we only need to choose the most essential learning competencies. So choosing the most essential learning competencies is not easy. The question is, where are we now as an institution? Where are we now as a school or as a teacher? Now, this is the closest figure I can think of and I can find in Google. This is where we are right now. The teacher who is at the center needs to be digitized. Why? Because of the mode of delivery of the MELC. Now, remember that surrounding teachers are students, our parents, our youth development workers, and other teachers as well. And we have a very vast learning communities. So we have personal learning networks, we have experts as well, and we need to interact with them. And our resources are coming from diverse sources, like the data that we're using, the content that we are putting into our MELC, the outline courses, and also the things that we need in order to complete our program. So identifying MELC is actually very important and it is like a tree. So when you look at a tree, we can learn something from a tree, from its characteristics, from its roots, and from its leaves. So according to Tasneem ha uh, Hamid, he said, we need to learn character from trees, values from roots, and the change from leaves. Now, if you look at the tree, of course, a tree will give us a shade. And of course, from the tree, it will give us something to cover. So it becomes our shelter when we are walking in the midst of uh, a wilderness and we will find one tree, of course, we can rest under the shades of the tree. So therefore, tree becomes our comfort. That is one characteristic of a tree. And we also need to learn from its roots. Now, when you say roots, it goes deep into the ground. And if it has a stronghold, it cannot easily be uprooted. So if the things that we are preparing for our students, like the MELC is rooted, then it will stay there forever and it cannot be easily uh, uprooted. It cannot be easily uh, uh, be taken away from the ground or it cannot be uprooted easily. And also we need to learn change from leaves. You know, leaves change from time to time, depending on the season. So there are, uh, the leaves change their colors during winter and then spring, summer or fall, right? So we need to learn from the change coming from the leaves. And right now we are actually embracing change. And that change is called the new normal, which for most of us, it's still not normal because we are still adjusting. So we need to learn from the uh, change from trees. And if we talk about trees, of course, 
it needs to be nurtured. The same thing with our lessons. The same thing with our modules. The same thing with our syllabus or syllabi. It needs nurturing. Even if you will tell me that your school has already established a very strong foundation when it comes to lesson planning, when it comes to modules, when it comes to syllabus, still it needs to be nurtured. According to Dubai, he said, keep watering the grown up trees too. Sometimes they need the most what they don't seem to need at all. And if you water trees, of course, there are ways on how to do it properly. There are ways on how to do it properly. Number one, you need to keep evenly moist. Most plants depend on even moisture. It means to say that when we try to identify most essential learning competencies, it has to be balanced. There should be no concentration of MELC in one aspect alone. Everything should be covered. Everything in learning should be covered. Everything in teaching should be covered. And everything in um, writing should be covered. But we just need to pick up the most essential learning competencies. Another tip is to give the right water quantity. It means to say that in identifying the MELC or in employing MELC into our lessons, into our syllabus, there should be no cognitive overload. Why? Because if you imagine one student will receive a lot of tasks from nine teachers, for example, because in case there are nine subjects. So if there will be a cognitive overload, the student will end up losing the interest in learning some more. So we need to be cautious in doing the MELC. Another tip also is we need to water with a target, but it should be distributed. Meaning to say, everything should be covered. Nothing should be left and answered. Everything should be answered in doing our MELC. Another tip is we need to avoid water logging. Meaning to say, when you say water logging, it means to say there is a, actually a restriction of oxygen from joining the process. Now, in MELC, we need to avoid this so that there will be a free flow of ideas. Everything should not be limited to one, but everything should be covered. And the last step is actually, we need to use quality clay rich soil. Meaning to say the foundation and the very core of our MELC should be of good quality, should be rich, and should be very strong and firm. Why? Because if the foundation is not strong, what will happen to your MELC? It will just go to waste because it is not well thought of. So when we try to do the process, we need to funnel everything into the learners. Why? Because our target are the learners and we need to funnel everything into the learners. What are these things? Number one, we need to plan our curriculum. It is very important. It is difficult to write a lesson plan without the curriculum guide. If you know your plan, you will know your objectives and goals you wish your class to meet. We need to envision the learning we want to occur and analyze how all the pieces of the learning experience should fit together to make that vision a classroom reality. So therefore, 
We just don't give whatever we have. We need to plan our curriculum. Why? Because that serves as our guide. The MELC or the most essential learning competencies that we have identified for our students must be planned well. Why? Because the non-essentials should not be included. It is only the MELC. Another thing that we're going to funnel into the learners is actually the design. Design the best program. Why? By providing a space for eager minds to grow, an academic institution can cultivate innovation and exploration worth the cost. So if a student is paying or even if it is for free, because most of the schools now are offering free education, but even if they are still investing, not in terms of money, but in terms of time and effort. So we need to design the program properly. Remember that institutions must rigorously advance their facilities and iterate core structures to support this vision. They need to invest in education to provide better programs for the students. It's then up to the students to be selective and demand what it is they need to learn in order to reach their goals. Another thing that we need to funnel to our learners, we need to implement set guidelines. The teacher should consider carefully the order in which learning targets should be learned. It is a normal tendency to put learning targets requiring lower level skills before those requiring higher level skills. For example, teaching the children to draw lines before teaching them to write. So everything has to have implementing guidelines. And the last thing that we're going to funnel into our learners is the assessment. We need to assess the learning experience of our students or our pupils. An important reason to assess student learning is to find out how well students are learning what we say we are teaching. To what degree are they accomplishing the learning outcomes we hold for them? Information from assessments can tell instructors, programs, and institutions if they need to make changes in what they teach or how they teach it. So we need to assess the learning experience of our students. So identifying the MELC is not actually easy. It takes an effort to perfect everything and it takes a longer time to come up with a most perfect MELC. Most perfect or the near perfect MELC. Because there are a lot of things to consider when we talk about MELC. Now, let's talk about the importance of MELC. You know, I have interviewed a lot of people and their answers are uh, really relevant to my discussion. Like Mr. Torino, he said that emphasizing the MELC in our curriculum delivery reflects our very own experience at present. We are asked to redirect our focus to the most essential things in life, such as food and safety. In the same manner, as educators, we are asked to rethink, gauge, and refocus the goals we have set with our learners as we respond to the question. After all, what would we hope our learners to become? So focusing on uh, the answer of the importance of MELC 
my attention is drawn into three things. The first one is actually our own experience or the experience at present. We are in a pandemic and our competence is being tried and tested. The competence of teachers and the competence of administrators are actually tested. And the experience that we have at the present is actually making us put forth our best effort to come up what is best in teaching and learning process. So the MELC plays a vital role in addressing what we are experiencing at the present. Another term that draws my attention is actually redirect our focus or redirecting our focus. If you notice, we are no longer having the face-to-face. -face. If we are having our face-to-face, -face, it's not actually 100%. And we don't stay with our students uh, at a longer time because time is essential. We need to observe social distancing. So we need to redirect our focus. And that is what we are doing right now. We are redirecting our focus. Instead of classroom teaching, we already adopted virtual platforms in order to deliver our lessons. And we are also adopting uh, the module modality in delivering our lessons. So we are actually redirecting our focus. And another phrase that gets my attention is actually these words, rethink, gauge, and refocus. It is very important in identifying the MELC because we need to think what we want our students to become after learning the subject? What do we want our students to achieve after learning the subject? That's why we need to be picky when it comes to MELC. We need to gauge whether this competent, uh, competency is still relevant or not. We need to weigh things because it's not as easy as A, B, C. It needs planning, it needs rethinking, it needs gauging, and it needs refocusing. Our focus right now is actually giving what is the most essential learning competencies to our students. Because of the situation that we are in, we need to think of MELC as our source in delivering quality education to our learners and to our students. Now, why is it that we need to write modules? Why? Because in our setup, not everyone has the capacity to access the internet. We need to find ways on how to deliver our lessons and we need to be inclusive with our teaching. We need to be inclusive with our planning because no one should be left behind in education. Everyone must be included and everyone must be part of the teaching learning process. That's why module writing is one way where we can employ the MELC. Now, I have interviewed one teacher, Ms. Gia Saison, and in writing modules, she said, we simply craft modules because it is our response to the needs of time amidst the threat of the pandemic. Modules will bridge the gap between school and our students whose internet accessibility is limited or none at all. 
Modules promote independent learning among our students. With modules, students will be trained, hopefully, to manage learning at their own pace and embrace the fact that learning is a shared responsibility of the school, students, teachers, and parents. Again, my attention is drawn to three phrases based on the answer given in terms of writing modules. The first is response to the need. Response to the need. Now, we all know, I don't know if in your country, everyone has access to internet. I'm not so sure. But where I am right now, we are actually doing our best to deliver lessons. We cannot simply ignore the physical delivery of modules. Why? Because most of our students are having no access to internet. If they have, their speed is very limited, like one to five Mbps, which is only good for social networking sites, uh, for local or simple browsing, but not actually through video conferencing where we can uh, do MS Teams or Zooming. So it's different. That's why this is our response to the need. There is a need to deliver lessons. And one way of delivering our lessons with MELC is through our modules delivered directly to their doorsteps. Can you imagine here in our school, we are doing the barangay drop-off. So we go to the barangay and deliver our lessons. Why? Because these students don't have access to the to internet. So we need to address the gap in order for the learning to continue. There should be continuity in learning. Another term that uh, draws my attention is actually bridging the gap. So as what I have discussed early on, we need to bridge the gap. There is a need to fill in the gap. Now, right now, what we are experiencing is number one, the slow internet speed in the Philippines. Number two, the lack of access to the internet, okay, on the part of the students. Now, these are the gaps and we need to bridge the gap. And in order to do that, we need to think properly on how to be inclusive so that no one is left behind. Another phrase that gets my attention is this, promote independent learning. Why? Because oh. teachers are okay. no longer with the students physically to coach, to train, to teach, but it is actually the MELC in a module that will serve as a guide. And it is actually a self-paced, depending on the student's speed in learning things. That's why it promotes independent learning. And the thing is, what is your role as a teacher? And what is my role as a teacher? So I have asked our dean, and this is her answer. Modules are not just pieces of papers to deliver knowledge to the end users. Whatever is our intention inside the classroom is the same intention we aim with this mode. That is why MELC is the essence. And fortunately, we become so limited, limited in pages as we consider cost limited in, access, in accessibility as we cannot reach out to them in totality as we wanted and limited with a touch as we forget what teacher's role should have been. So again, my attention is drawn into three phrases. Number one is this word, intention. So what is your intention 
in identifying the MELC? What is your intention in, in employing the MELC in your module? So we need to be clear on that. We just, we just don't make or we just don't identify MELC for the sake of compliance. We need to think that the MELC will not end in the school or in the classroom, but it goes beyond the school. It goes beyond because it is for life. So what is your intention? We need to be very clear on our intentions in identifying the MELC. Another word is this. M-E-L-C is the essence. Why is this the essence? Again, because we can no longer um, inject, we can no longer use the entire syllabus or the entire lesson to our students because of the situation. That's why we need to be picky with our M-E-L-C. We only need to include the most essential learning competencies. And the third word is the word limited. Yes, limited because you cannot just give the entire book to the students. You need to plan out. The design should be great so that even if uh, there will be limited pages to use, you can actually include everything in one module together with the MELC that you have chosen for your students to learn. So what could be the best mode of delivery? I asked one teacher again, her name is Mrs. De La Cruz, and she said, considering the pandemic situation all over the world, the best way in delivering modules to learners is through localization. Teachers write learning modules, the school reproduce them, the officials in the community will help in the distribution of modules to the respective household of the learners. Stakeholders in education should be active this time. Now, let's look at her answer more closely. The word localization, because we cannot just simply rely on the internet, because there is no guarantee when it comes to learning through the internet. We need to sometimes go out from our comfort zone, go to their respective barangay or places and distribute what we have prepared for them so that they will not be left behind so that they will be included. So that's why localization is the key. Now I am speaking on behalf of what we are doing here in our school. Another word is this, community. The community is involved in this manner. Why? Because it is where teachers will go or the staff will go to deliver. We will channel it through the community. They have also the responsibility in the delivery of lessons. The community is actually part of the process. And the last one is stakeholders. So everyone should be involved. Like in our case, we actually uh, tie up with other big companies. Like for example, um, telcos. We need to tap them so that they can help us with our connectivity. So, you know, all, everyone who is involved in education, in the teaching learning process should have their share in the delivery of MELC. Why? Because we are in a very challenging situation and the only way to actually survive and deliver quality education is by thinking on what is common among us. Like for example, at this time, we are coming from different time zones. We have different time, time zones, but we are having a common ground. 
that is to learn more, that is to execute more, and that is to have more. So we need to do that. Why? Because we are part of the process. So I have interviewed a parent and I asked about his view on education. And this is the answer of Mr. Takder. He said, there is a reason to worry about the kind of education my son would get during a season of pandemic where close contact is prohibited and class sessions are done online. This is something new and difficult to achieve given the fact that students have different ways of learning ability. But I do hope that our educators are both prepared and equipped to deliver a good education to all our children during this new normal. So again, let us concentrate on three things. Number one, reason to worry. Yes, indeed, it is or there is actually a reason to worry because this is our first time to experience such a pandemic and this is our first time to experience the new normal. We don't have this before. It is only now. That's why there is always a reason to worry. Are we competent enough to deliver what is expected from us? Can parents do the same? Because at home, the parents will have the role or, or will take the role of a teacher. They need to also make follow-up. They also need to do some explanation to the lessons. That's why there is always a reason to worry. And this is very challenging to face. And we need to be very cautious with our approach so that we can do this perfectly or so that we can do this with a great amount of success. Another phrase is this, something new. Yes, this is something new. And most of the things that we are doing is something strange to us. Like we need to be digitized. We need to migrate from traditional to digital. And we need to upgrade our learning so we need to unlearn things in the past. We need to relearn things and we need to learn more things because this is something new to us. And we need to just do it right because once you do it right, you can deliver it right, then we can have a better output or result of the process. And the last is hope. Yes, there is always hope and parents are also putting their hope to us that we will deliver what is expected from us, that we will deliver what is the best to the learners. And for us teachers, there is always hope that we can somehow perfect the process. It is not an overnight success. We need to keep on doing it we need to keep on changing it. That's why it's called curriculum development because it keeps on changing. It keeps on growing. It is not just a one-time reproduction or identification of MELC. We need to, again, rethink of things. We need to gauge things and we need to refocus on things. So with the words, coming from Mr. Torino, from Ms. Saison, from uh, Dr. Polinar, from Mrs. De La Cruz, and from John, we can say that what we are doing right now or what we are supposed to be doing right after is really important. And your participation is of great essence. Why? Because it is not easy. We need to be considerate 
of everything. We need to refocus, we need to gauge, and we need to rethink. So based on their answers, actually, on the questions uh, which I have posted early on, we can learn that quality is never an accident. It is always a product of an effort. And this time, it is a product of an intelligent effort. We need to think and rethink and think again. And this is an ongoing process so that we can come up with the most essential learning competencies. If we are going to perfect the process, uh, of course, we can say that it will lead us to, to something bigger. It will lead us to something brighter for our learners and for the teachers as well. We need to remember that education is the most powerful weapon, according to Nelson Mandela. And we need to use education to actually change the world. Now, we teachers, we have the role to change the world, and it is our mission. In fact, our role during the pandemic is of great importance because we are there not just as, te uh, not ju uh, not just, uh, as teachers, but we are there also as their guide, as their coach, as their trainer. So everything should come together, everyone should help, so that we can come up with the most essential learning competencies. Now, we need to keep on learning. I know for some, it would be very difficult. For some, the process is sometimes tedious. Sometimes it is time consuming, but we need to keep on learning. Because uh, I remember the words of Einstein. He said that the moment you stop learning, you start dying. So, you know, we need to keep on living. We are not here merely to survive, but we are here to live as teachers. So before we will go to our Q&A, let me first share with you a quote which I came across with as I prepared my presentation. We need to know more about less until we know everything about nothing. So in identifying the most essential learning competencies, we need to know more about what we have learned less about MELC until we know everything about most essential learning competencies. So I would like to say thank you for listening to all our viewers uh, who are registered in this uh, webinar, who have registered in this webinar. Thank you so much for listening and I'm open for questions. Thank you. Hello. Yes, uh, you have a question? If you've got your questions, please turn on your microphone and ask Dr. Montejo. Any questions? Maybe they can, they can actually write their questions in the chat box. Yeah. 